10 Things You Didn't Know About Saint Laurent. Welcome to Luxify. We talk about fashion, travel, money, and basically all the best things life has to offer. Welcome to our video listing the 10 things you didn't know about Saint Laurent. Founded in 1961, Saint Laurent is one of the most prominent fashion houses of the 20th century. Originally a house of haute couture, Yves Saint Laurent revolutionized the way fashion and society merge and interact in 1966 with the introduction of high-end made clothes, produced on a larger scale than the exclusive collections. The Maison was the first one to be revolutionary, and this spirit is a fundamental part of its DNA. Saint Laurent competes globally with the most high-end exclusive luxury brands and occupies a leading position. At the end of the video, we have a bonus fact that may surprise you. So without further ado, here are 10 things you didn't know about Saint Laurent. If you are new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram, at Luxficom. Number 10. Yves Saint Laurent is famous for his quotes. Yves Saint Laurent secured a reputation as one of the 20th century's foremost designers and personalities. He is famous for his quotes, like Fashion fade, style is eternal. Chanel freed women, and I empowered them. We must never confuse elegance with snobbery. Good clothing is a passport for happiness. Number 9. His first taste of fashion was designing dresses for paper dolls. Saint Laurent grew up in a Mediterranean villa alongside his older sisters Michelle and Brigitte. As a shy and timid schoolboy, Saint Laurent was bullied by his peers at the Catholic church he attended, leading him to seek refuge in design. At a young age, he would use scraps of his mother's clothes to create miniature couture ensembles for paper dolls, and stage fashion shows with these dolls for his siblings and their friends. He would even go so far as to create elaborate invitations for the invitees. As he grew older, Saint Laurent moved from designing ensembles for paper dolls to dreaming up dresses for his mother and sisters. Number 8. Yves Saint Laurent was the youngest creative director to ever head a major fashion house. In 1953, Saint Laurent's drawings caught the attention of Michael Brunhoff, who was editor-in-chief of French Vogue at the time. Brunhoff showed the sketches to Christian Dior, who hired the talented young designer as an assistant in 1955. When Dior died unexpectedly of a heart attack in 1957, the then 21-year-old Saint Laurent was made creative director of the prestigious Maison. His first offering, the spring 1958 Trapeze Collection, practically saved the house from financial ruin. However, things took a turn in 1960, when Saint Laurent found himself obligated to serve in the French army during the Algerian War of Independence. Number 7. Yves Saint Laurent invented the tuxedo for women. In his autumn-winter 1966 collection, Yves Saint Laurent introduced his most iconic piece, the tuxedo. This garment, which was meant to be worn in a smoking room to protect one's clothing from the smell of cigars, was originally reserved only for men. Saint Laurent's tuxedo, however, was not an exact copy of the men's tuxedo. He used the same coats, but adapted it to the female body. He said, for a woman, the tuxedo is an indispensable garment, in which she will always feel in style, for it is a stylish garment and not a fashionable garment. Saint Laurent's tuxedo proved too ahead of its time and was initially snubbed by his haute couture clientele. Only one was sold. Paradoxically, the Saint Laurent Yves Gaucher version was a success. The label's younger clientele was quick to purchase it, making the tuxedo a classic. Saint Laurent would go on to include it in each of his collections until 2002. The smoking, the sharply tailored all-black tuxedo remains the signature style that defines Saint Laurent's impact on fashion. Number 6. Tom Ford was YSL's creative director. The house of Yves Saint Laurent was bought by the Gucci Group, and Tom Ford, who was also heading up the Italian label Gucci at the time, was appointed as creative director. 
Ford signified a new mood for the label. His debut collection was designed to make an impact, and it presented monochromatic looks completely void of accessories that Saint Laurent had worked so hard to perfect. The relationship between the two creatives was tense, with Ford claiming that Saint Laurent didn't approve of his vision for the brand, despite critical acclaim and skyrocketing sales. Ford left the brand in 2004 and was replaced for former Miu Miu designer Stefano Pilati. If you are enjoying this video so far, we strongly recommend you to subscribe to our channel, so we can continue to bring you the best content about fashion and luxury living. Number 5. He was the first living designer to be honored by the Metropolitan Museum of Art. In 1983, the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York announced that the Custom Institute's exhibition would be completely devoted to the works of Saint Laurent. It would go on to be the first retrospective of a living designer's work. The show, entitled Yves Saint Laurent, 25 Years of Design, was organized by Diana Vreeland and displayed 243 of the designer's most extraordinary creations, including the famous Mondrian and Matisse-inspired designs from 1965 and the velvet bridal coat, embroidered with the words Love Me Forever or Never, an alternative to the white, billowing wedding dress. Number 4. In 2012, the brand's name was changed. Called Yves Saint Laurent since its creation in 1961, in 2012 the creative director Heidi Sliman changed the brand's name to Saint Laurent Paris. Sliman's dramatic four-year rebranding of the label, which stripped Yves from the nomenclature, certainly divided opinions. Saint Laurent Paris was on the receiving end of a media backlash, which is perhaps why Sliman chose a life in LA and famously avoided press exposure in favor of his singular vision. Sliman took a unique and controversial approach to runway shows, casting models reminiscent of the Kate Moss era, playing music recorded specially for the event and fusing men's and women's collection in a bid to emphasize the gender-fluid message. While each of Saint Laurent's successors had undoubtedly made their mark on the fashion house, none transformed it quite like Sliman. Number 3 the YSL logo also changed in 2012. Yves Saint Laurent's original logo, boasting the sweeping YSL, was crafted by graphic artist Cassandre in 1961 and promptly became one of the most memorable and untouchable symbols in fashion. However, in 2012, newly throned creative director Heidi Sliman revealed an aesthetic change that sent shockwaves throughout the brand's following. The classic logo was replaced with minimal Helvetica type that dropped the Eves altogether, an homage to the house's first ready-to-wear line in 1966. While the classic YSL remains branded on some accessories and the house's haute couture line, ready-to-wear and many accessories are now labeled with the new moniker of Saint Laurent Paris. Number 2. YSL did a runway show in the 1988 World Cup Finals. On July 12, 1988, Yves Saint Laurent staged a monumental fashion show, featuring 300 designs at the Stade de France for the FIFA World Cup. 900 people helped to organize the 15-minute event, which was viewed by 1.7 billion international spectators on live television. Number 1. Yves Saint Laurent revolutionized the way women dress. His biggest regret may be that he didn't invent denim, but the designer has revolutionized the way women dress in more ways than one can imagine. The prolific Saint Laurent was the creator of the still iconic Le Smoking, the first ever woman's tuxedo suit that quickly became a symbol of emancipation in the 1960s, an era when women wearing anything but dresses was deemed taboo. During his last couture show in 2002, the designer recalled, I always wanted to put myself at the service of women. I wanted to accompany them in the great movement for liberation that occurred last century. 
the constantly reinterpreted Le Smoking was the first of a string of eternal designs, including safari jackets, color block Mondrian dresses, and the chubby, from Monsieur Saint Laurent's 1971 Scandal Collection. That's a wrap on our list of the 10 things you didn't know about Saint Laurent. Let us know in the comments below which one was your favorite, or if you are a true YSL fan and already knew all of this. Comment below which brands you would like to know more about. And for sticking with us this far, here is some bonus information. Yves Saint Laurent is known for making timeless handbags. No designer bag collection is complete without a YSL bag. The Parisian Maison is renowned for producing some of the most enduring silhouettes that can transform even the most casual of outfits. And creative director Anthony Vaccarello continues to ensure that Saint Laurent bags retain their contemporary relevance. New additions to the line, like the Kaya and Solferino bags, fuse heritage aesthetics with modern appeal. Whether you have a wardrobe full of high-end bags or are saving for your first ever luxury piece, there is a YSL bag to suit every style and budget. From the never out of fashion sunset and sac de jour models to instantly recognizable pieces like the Lulu, there is a dream bag to land right at the top of your wish list. The small Lulu bag is sold on their website for 2050 US dollars. Thank you for spending some time with us, and make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss a video. In return, we'll provide you the best content about fashion, travel, and luxury living. See you soon!